doing it right? It's Dean Veet. Oh, Dean, but it's D. Okay, yeah. so you <laughs> did beat. Okay, beat, Thank beat, you. beat. All right, beat. Okay, beat. Oh, I see. Thank you. We learn every time. Okay, so let's get to this week's session. Welcome to your fourth session where we working towards submitting our assignment too when it opens which will be very soon i think this week as well so with study unit five we're going to split it into three parts so this week we're going to concentrate mainly on the discrete probability distribution and the next two weeks we're going to look at the other two parts of the discrete uh, probability, which is Poisson and binomial. So we'll split them into those three sessions, two sessions. So let's dig in today because um, today I, I, I realized that the video I've shared with you didn't work on my UNISA and I think I shared the uh, wrong other video as well on the WhatsApp. So we're going to do things different this week because then you didn't have enough time to watch the video that I wanted you to to watch and I'm not going to upload it anymore because then everything will be covered in this video. OK, so by the end of the, uh, the session today, you will learn what is a probability distribution of a random discrete variable. Uh, how to calculate the mean of a discrete variable, the variance and the standard deviation, and also how to calculate the probabilities of a discrete variable. Before we start that, let's go back to the beginning and start with unpacking the definition of what a random variable is. A random variable represents a possible outcome, uh, especially of, from a numerical value, from an uncertain event. So for example, when you, you create an event of tossing a coin, then that event that you are creating will have some outcomes coming out of that. But that event that you are creating should be a random one and should be, you should be able to count the number of times certain things happen within that random randomness that you are counting. For example, if I'm tossing five coins and I want to count how many times the coin will land on a head and that the number of times that when I toss it, it lands on, on, on one or those five coins land on a head, probably all of them land doesn't land on a head, they all land on a tail. So the outcome there is zero because that will be the outcome that the coin never landed on the head. How many times when I toss all those five coins, they all of them or not all of them, one of them lands on a head and four of them don't land on a head, they land on a tail. I can count how many times those um, times are okay. And I can go on and on and on and on and on and on until I have got all my outcome based on the five coins that I am tossing. And that is creating a random event. Then from the that random event creates a variable that I can use to count how many times certain things are happening. So we know also that a random event can either be in both cases. It can either be because we're talking about a numerical values here. It can either be a discrete variable or it can be a continuous variable. For example, when a continuous variable will be when I take a thermometer and I check the temperatures of people, whether the people have high temperature or a temperature of zero or one or two or three, things like that. And then I can use that, uh, the, the, the continuous uh, variable to check. 
Uh, the discrete variable will be when the outcome can be counted um, because it will come from a counting process. And we did discuss the type of variables from study unit one. Remember that. So in study unit five, we're discussing things like discrete random variable. In study unit six, we're going to discuss everything relating to continuous variable. So today, study unit five, we're only going to concentrate on discrete random variables. So <clears throat> a discrete random variable can only assume a countable values. Like for example, we use that if I toss or I roll a die, let's say I roll a die twice, let X be the number of times four. Okay, so I roll a die, it can either I can roll it and no four appears, that will be zero. I can roll it and it appears once or twice or three times or four times, it depending on the number of times that you are rolling that die. Um, or if I toss a coin five times, uh, let X be the number of times it lands on a head and it can be zero, one, two, three, four, or five, and so on. So when we talk about a probability distribution for a discrete variable, usually we're talking about events that are going to be mutually exclusive. Remember, those events cannot happen at the same time, so it means they only they cannot influence one another as well, so they should be independent as well. And it must also be collectively exhaustive because then it must include all possible outcomes of a sample space of that. What happens with uh, your outcomes, they should have also some probability that corresponds to that outcome that is happening because for the, for the fact that we are able to count how many times a coin will land um, on, a, on a head and we say zero time. So if I toss it five times and five times of it, oh, Three, uh, three times it lands on a tail, therefore it means zero time. Or if one time it lands on a, on a head, therefore the frequency will count as one. If I toss it and three times, of, of, uh, three times it lands on, um, on, a, on a head, therefore I will uh, count the frequency of three times as three if I toss it and it lands on a uh, tail, uh, then it will go into the zero time because it didn't land on a head. So you just need to count the frequencies and after counting those frequencies, then you can calculate your probabilities as well. So for example, these probabilities, you would have calculated them from the frequencies Therefore, this probability are related to your relative frequencies, right? Remember, when you calculate your relative frequencies, you take your frequencies and you divide it by the total. Sometimes it will not be as straightforward as this because the table that they will give you for the discrete probabilities might look like this. It might be that they give you the outcomes and they say in this family there are five there are zero people living in this household there is one person there is two people there are three people living in this household and we conducted this survey and we found that only four people are living in this family there are zero people in that household or maybe let's say this household are people in primary school. Let's call it like that. How many children in this household are in primary school? So four of the families that we interviewed do not have children in primary school. Two of them have children in primary school. Ten of them have ten ch two children that are in primary school. Thirteen of them have children in primary school. So. I can call this my frequency or my count. So this is my frequency and I can calculate my frequency, my relative frequencies, right? 
and my relative frequencies, I will calculate it based on this frequency count, which is 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 10 is 16, plus 13 is 29. So that will be 29. And therefore, 4 divided by 29 will give me, um, I must just open my calculator quickly. Otherwise, if you have your calculator quicker, you can give me the count. So 4 divided by 29. 0.137. 0.137. 0.138. So I can keep two decimals. So I will say 0 0.114, right? 0 0.14. And 2 divided by 29, only two decimals. 2 divided by 29. Not 0.07. Not 0.07. 0.07. 0.07. And 10 divided by 29. 0 0.34. 0 0.34. 13 divided by 29. Not 0.45. Not 0.45. Not 0.45. What do we know about probabilities as well? The sum of all of them should give me one. So let's add all of them. They should all give me one. So let's see. 0.14 plus 0 0.07 plus 0 0.34 plus 0.45 should equals to one as my total, right? Yes, it's correct. That is total. So you can see that I can create my relative frequencies based on this random free, uh, random variable that I have, which are the number of children that are in primary school. And this will be my probability of X and which is, makes up a table like this, and I can answer any questions relating to this probability table or my uh, probability distribution table. This is what we call a distribution table because it distributes all my random variables and it includes the probabilities that are related to those random variables that I have. These are my values from my random variable interruptions per day and this is my random variable of number of children in primary school so okay so based on this probability distribution we can answer some questions like for example we can calculate the expected value remember now with a uh, we said only study unit in study unit three, we said we can only calculate uh, the mean, the standard deviation and all that for only numerical values. But here we're talking about categorical values, but we are talking about categorical values in terms of a discrete probability distribution and we are able to calculate the expected or the mean of that. But the mean of that will not be the sum of the values divided by how many they are. And that is the reason why we cannot use the measures of central tendencies as we use it to calculate the mean of a continuous um, variable. And as we calculate the, the, the mean of a discrete variable, if we want as well. Here we're talking about calculating the expected mean of a probability distribution and the formula that we use is mean is the sum of your expected value or your outcome multiplied by your probability the corresponding probability what we mean remember our table had our x outcome and its corresponding probabilities to calculate the mean we say the outcome multiplied by its corresponding probability plus the outcome multiplied by its corresponding probability plus, and we continue adding all of them because 
of this summation. Summation means adding up. So we're going to say 0, 0 multiplied by 0 0.35 gives us 0. 1 multiplied by 0 0.25 gives us 0 0.25. 2 multiplied by 0 0.2 gives us 0 0.40. 3 multiplied by 0 0.1 gives us 0 0.3. 4 multiplied by 0 0.05 gives us 0 0.20. 5 multiplied by 0 0.05 gives us 0 0.25. And we just add all of these values together. 0 0.00 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.40 plus 0 0.30 plus 0 0.20 plus 0 0.25 gives us the expected mean of 1.40. And that's how you calculate the expected mean of a discrete variable. Here is your exercise. Now, based on what we just learned, we know that the sum of all probabilities, so the sum of all probabilities equals to 1. On this table that we have, it has an equa uh, an equal mark, a, a question mark. Therefore, it means we don't know what the probability that corresponds with outcome four is. So this we have, Africa Checks knows that election time, the number of daily fake news posts about politician follows the uh, discrete probability distribution. Let X be the number of daily fake news posts. And here we are given the outcome in terms of daily fake news posts. Um, they can be zero, which is no daily fake news. At least one day, or not at least one daily, uh, exactly one daily fake news, two daily fake news, three daily fake news, or four daily fake news. And they are corresponding probabilities, but we don't have the probability for four. So we can calculate the probability for four. How can we calculate it? Anyone? One minus all the other values. One minus the sum of all the other values, and therefore you can calculate it for us. So the question mark is one minus the sum of all the values, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.25. And what is the value for four? No, 0.3. 0, 0.3. Not 0.3. Oh, you guys are on the room. Okay, so we know that this is 0 0.3. Now let's calculate the expected value. So to calculate the expected value, we know that the formula is the sum of your outcome multiplied by its corresponding probabilities. So all you do is multiply 0 with 0 0.5. I can write here P P times X, and you can calculate them there and then add them together. So 0 times 0 0.1 will give us 0. 1 times 0 0.15 will give us 0 0.15. 2 times 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.2 will give us 0 0.4. 3 times 0 0.25. 0 0.75. 0 0.75. 0.75. So therefore we have 0 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.75. What is our expected we, value? We haven't we done 4, 4. Like oh, we didn't do 4, yes. 4 times 0 0.4? 1.2. It's 1.2. 1.2, so we add 1.2. Oh, you are awake. Thank you for being awake on a Sunday. Okay, so I'm, uh, it, it shows that I'm still in a, a, a weekend mode. Okay, then we add all of them. What do it's we get as an 2. answer? 2.5. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2 decimals. Is that 2.5? It's just 2.5. 2.5. And that is our expected mean. So we are also able to calculate uh, the discrete variables as well. We are able to calculate the variance of a discrete variable 
and the variance is the sum of your outcome minus the expected value, which is the mean that we calculated, squared, you square the, uh, your outcome minus the expected mean squared, multiply the answer with the corresponding probabilities. And because it's a sum, you will do it for every individual outcome. Otherwise, we can calculate also the standard deviation, which is just the square root of your variance. So how do we do that? Remember our table, the original one with the interruptions per day? So here our X values, I've just transposed the table. Originally we were working with it in this, um, in that way. Now I just transpose it. Um, so you can also in the exam find it in this manner, but usually most of the time it is transposed the way we, we started with. Okay, so to calculate the standard deviation, because the variance is everything that is underneath the square root, we can calculate that and also calculate the standard deviation. So I'm going to do both at the same time, because you can't get the, vari the standard deviation without calculating the variance. So we're going to split the calculation into two parts. We're going to first do the first bracket, which is this contains the square. So we're going to say zero minus the expected value. Remember our expected value that we calculated previously was 1.4, right? Our expected value from our original calculations was 1.4. So now, we're going to say 0 minus 1.4 and square the answer, we get 1.96. 1 minus 1.4 squared, we get the answer, and we get up to 5 minus 1.4, and we get the answer. Then once we have the answer, we can move to taking the answer, multiplying it with the probability, which is the second part that I'm doing here. So taking 1.96, multiplying by 0 0.35, I get the answer of 0 0.686. And I do everything, all of them, up until I get to uh, 12.96 multiplied by 0 0.5, which is 0 0.48. I add all these values together. When I add all these values together, they give me everything underneath the square root, which is my variance. So they give me my variance. my variance of 2,04. When I take the square root, which is the square root of 2,04, I get my standard deviation, which is 1,4283. And that's how you calculate the variance and the standard deviation of your discrete variable. So using the same exercise that we did, calculate the standard deviation of this question. So remember, you said the expected mean, we calculated it, you said it was 2.5, right? That's what we got. So now we need to calculate the whole Thing. So you can do everything together. You, that, you, you don't have to do it the way I did it. So what you can do is 0 minus 2.5 if you want to save time because you're working on your calculators. So 0 minus 2.5 and you take the square root of that or the square. Sorry, not the square root, but the square of the answer. And that gives you 6.25 and you multiply that with 0.1 and the answer you will get there will be 0, 0,625. So what I'm doing here is X minus the expected value squared multiplied by the corresponding probability and that gives me those answers that I'm going to write there. So you also can do that. So you can give me the answers for the rest of the questions as well. So 1 minus 2.5 equals square the answer, which is 2.25. 
multiply that with 0.15. I just did the, the two. You can do the rest. Keep at least four decimals in order for you to get almost at least the correct answer when you complete the question. 0 0.3375. So I'll wait for you to finish the whole question. 0 0.3375. You will tell me the other values. Two minus two point five squared. Two minus two point five equals and then square the answer and multiply that by zero point two. What do you get? It's zero comma zero five. Zero comma zero five. So let's go to the next one. Um, three minus two point five equals. Square the answer and multiply that with 0.25 equals what you get. Nobody. 0, 0.0625. 0, 0,0625. Let's go to the next last one. It is 4 minus 2.5 equals square the answer. You get 2.25, right? Multiply that with 0.3. What do you get? Zero point six seven five. Zero point six seven five. Now add all these values together and give me the answer. So you just go back and add all these values together. What do you get when you add all these values together? 1.75. 1.75, which is our variance. So 1.75. Take the square root of that. Take the square root of the variance. 1.3229. Or should I put to two decimal places? Uh, let's leave it to two decimal places. 1.32. 1.332. And that's how you calculate the standard deviation of a discrete variable. Easy, right? If you are lost, let me know right now before we move on to the next to the next question. Unfortunately, I am I don't always look at the chat if some if people post on the chat, especially when when we doing some explaining when I'm doing some explanations. Okay. So if there are no questions, we move on. Now let's look at how we calculate the probabilities as well. So remember Yes. I, I've raised a I've raised a hand. Yeah. Uh, I just okay. want okay on on this exercise. What I would like to maybe you you to emphasize uh, the calculation. It, it's actually 
let's say if uh, I'm on uh, number three, so it's three minus 2.5 squared multiplied by 2.5, am I correct? Yeah, so when you are working on your calculator, you see this thing yes. is inside the bracket. I expect you to also put it in the bracket. If you don't put it in the bracket, therefore it means you're going to say three minus 2.5, you must say equal because you didn't put it in the bracket, right? So you will say equal. And then once you have the answer, once you put the equal and you have your answer, then press the X squared button and then press equal. And then press, what, what do we need? Multiply by, and then you will say, uh, multiply by 0 0.25. Two, five, and probably you will need to also press again the equal sign to get the answer. That is what you need to do on your calculator. If you are using the bracket and you're following what it does here, so you will use bracket and you say X, uh, 3 minus 2.5 and you close the bracket and then you press the X squared button and you press equal and or you don't have to press equal, you can press multiply by, but I prefer to use the equal sign so often. And once you have the equal sign and then press the multiplication and 0 0.25 and press equal, that will still give you the, the answer that you have there. All right, thank you so much. Well said. No problem, thank you. Okay, so now let's look at how we calculate the probabilities of the same distribution table. I'm just going to explain um, several things and then we'll go and do some more exercises. We're almost done with the basic things. Okay, so in terms of your discrete probabilities and not only in terms of the discrete probabilities, from now on going forward, this is more relevant going forward as well. Some of the questions you will be given to them, uh, they will be given to you in a word phrase type of like questions. You need to use those words to convert it into a mathematical expression in order for you to answer the question. For example, when they say what will be the probability that exactly, you need to know that exactly is the same as equal or equal to. Uh, or they might say fewer than, less than, uh, below. So you need to know how to take these word phrases and assign the sign. It's very, very important. For example, let's use this, um, our example that we came with from the beginning, the interruptions per day of a computer network. So we're going to use this to answer questions relating to this. So I'm going to pick any of the number. Look, I'm going to stick to two all the way. So I'm going to use two as my, my question for answering any of these questions. So if I need to calculate the probability that it is exactly, I need to know that they are asking me to calculate the probability that equals to two, exactly two. So they are asking me to calculate the probability that it is equal to two. So therefore, because the probabilities are calculated here, I just need to go and take the probability, which is 0 0.20. So what is the probability that at least uh, four? That's your question. Your question, what is the probability that at least four? Anyone? 0.05. It is 0 0.05, yes, because it's that probability there. So you need to be able to read this. The quicker someone answers, the quicker we move to the next one. Don't make me ask you again and again and again and again. Time, 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 time. Okay. Let's keep time, time. Let's work together. Okay, so if they ask, sorry, um, question, question. yes, is it only going to be zero point five of uh four, not including of five? Because I see no. they're saying um greater than no, or equal no, to. No, 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 no. We said oh. exactly. Oh. 
Sorry, I thought you. Ah, sorry. We still on exactly, exactly. Now you move into the next one, or, or the next, the next, 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 the next, next. Okay, so what if now we we done with exactly? So everyone understand what exactly means, right? What about when they ask you when it is fewer than, or they say it is below two? When they say, what is the probability that X is below 2? It means X is any value that is not 2, but it any value that is less than 2. So those values that are less than 2 are 0 and 1, right? It's not 2, but it's any value that is less than 2. So it means they are asking you, what is the probability that X is equals to 0? plus what is the probability that x is equals to 1 that is less than 2 all of those so it means you're going to say it is 0 comma 3 5 plus 0 comma 2 5 and that is 0 comma 6 0 right am i counting right i think and i hope so that my counting is right what is the probability yes, that it's right. less, yeah what is the probability that it is fewer than four that is your question what is the probability that it is fewer than four um okay i think we're gonna add all from zero one two and three yes because they're less than four Yes, you're going to add all this together, point which nine. is which is equals to 0 0.9. 0 0.9, all right. So you're getting the grip of everything, right? So we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. You understand. So I'm just going to erase this because I'm going to run out of space. So now we move on to the greater than, which they can ask the question above. They can say, what is the probability that there are three or oh, above three? Above, no, above two. I remember I said two is my, my, my number. Above two. So what they are asking is, what is the probability that X is greater than two? Because it's above two. So therefore, it means they are talking about any of those values that are above two, not including two but anything that is bigger than two, which is greater than two. And that is 0 0.10 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.05, because it's three, four, and five. Probability that it's three, four, and five. That's 0 0.2. Which is 0 0.2. 0 0.2, right? Now let's move on to at most. So we're done with, I'm not going to ask you to do that. So if they ask you above or more than, so you need to remember all that. Ne? More than, above, they mean it's greater than. What about when they ask you at most? And they like asking at most, at least. So now we are at most. At most means it is at most two will mean it X is less than or equal to two. And therefore, it means it must include two. So it will be the probability that X is equals to zero plus the probability that X is equals to one plus the probability that X is equals to two. It's all of them. So now with at most, it means it is everything below two and including two because it's equal, less than, or equal, which means it includes that number. So therefore, it's 0, 0.8. 0, 0.8. Because it's 0 0.2 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.3. Okay. What is the probability that it is no more than 5? What is the probability that it is no more than five? Zero point zero five. Ah, 
No more than five. What is that probability? You One. can even find the probability One. without even doing any calculations because we know that the sum of all probabilities should just be yeah, it's one. It's one. It's one. one. Yes, you're getting it. You're getting it. You're getting it. Okay, so we're done with at most. At least is the opposite of at most as well uh, because at least says it is greater than or equal. So if I need to find the probability that X is greater than or equals to two, Therefore, it means it includes two and any value above two. Any outcome above two will be included. So it will be the probability that X is equals to two, the probability that X is equals to three, the probability that X is equals to four, and the probability that X is equals to five, which will be adding all these probabilities, and that is equals to? 0 0.4. 0 0.4. So you understand that. I'm not even going to ask you with no less that because now you guys understand everything. Um, now we get to the between. Between, they need to tell you whether the between, if they tell you in words, is it inclusive or is it exclusive? Because inclusive will mean they in, it includes the values, therefore it needs to have an equality sign to it and the Exclusive, it means there should not be any equal sign next to it. So, for example, what is the probability that X is between A and B inclusive? So, let's use, I'm just going to remove all the, the paint all at once. So, if I need to find the probability that X lies between and in, it's inclusive, it lies between two and five because it says inclusive so it says x is greater than two but it's also less than five so i can start from two and i must end at five so it says it is less than but it also greater than oh, sorry it's greater than two but it also less than two so it will be between so i've just given you the answer therefore it means it is x is equals to two plus x is equals to 3, plus the probability that x is equals to 4, plus the probability that x is equals to 5, because it's inclusive of all the values less than, uh, greater than 5, but sorry, greater than 2, less than 5. It's those values in between. And that will be Zero. equals to 0. Point Four again, right? When four. Yeah. So if they ask you what is the probability that X is between two and five, but it includes uh, exclusive, so therefore they are asking you what is the probability that X is not equals X lies between two and five, but exclusive. So it means it doesn't include uh, two and five. And that will be, if I look at this five. question, it says it will be any value, not including two, but less than two, and not including five, less than five. So that will be only the probability of X is equals to three, plus the probability that X is equals to four only. And so which will be that will be 0 0.15 and that is inclusive sometimes they can mix up the inclusives so it can be the probability that x is great uh, less uh, greater than or equals to two but it is less than five you need to know how to get to that so let's read that if they have one equality and the other doesn't have so it says it includes two and it's any value greater than uh, two. Um, and it says, but it does not include five and it's any value below five. So that will be from there to there because it doesn't include five. So any value less than five will mean two, three, and four. So you will get the probability of 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 
plus 0 0.05 and that is 0 0.35 and that's how you will answer the probability questions any questions before we move on to the exercises because we are done with me explaining how you will answer questions relating to discrete probabilities are there any questions no no questions then I'm going to give you five minutes to answer that on your own and we will do some feedback just now. Let me give you some question, uh, some time to reflect on the question on your own. Remember, when you have an answer, you can post it on the chat and then everybody who agrees with that answer can always uh, put a smiley face on it or a thumbs up or a laugh because you love it. And so on and so forth. Two is wrong. Yeah, number two is wrong. Okay, so you guess, I guess that everyone is done with the question there. <clears throat> Remember, we need to evaluate all the questions since we are doing some practice work anyway. Uh, this is not the exam. In the exam, the first time you get to the answer, you just move on to the next question because it's ex exam and it's crunch time. With assignments and with um, activities, practice, practice, practice. So it means go through all the options and evaluate all the options, spend extra time on the question. OK, so let's do that. Check Africa. We've been working on Check Africa. We know that. 0. Point, uh, number 4 is 0. 0.3, right? If I still remember, this value here is, is 0. 0.3. Okay, so what we didn't cover is what if they ask you questions about the probability that is not on, or the outcome that is not on the table, right? You remember from basic probability, an uncertain event has the probability of zero, right? Which means, an uncertain event is an, an event that, that cannot occur or does not occur, which um, also a mutually exclusive event will have a probability of zero. But here we're not talking about mutually exclusive events. We're talking about an uncertain event. OK. So for example, if they ask you what is the probability that uh, x, is, uh, x is 5, automatically that probability should be equals to zero because there is no five on this outcome. So that is an uncertain event. That is an event that can never happen. All right, so let's answer this question. Let X be the number of daily fake news posts. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Number one states the probability of X is equals to one. Oh, the sum of all probabilities equals to one. Is that correct? That's correct. That is correct because if you add all these values, you will get one. Number two says the probability of X is equals to four is equals to zero. What is the probability of X is equals to four? 0 0.3. 0 0.3. 0 0.3. So that is the incorrect one. 
the probability of x less than 4 or equals to 4? It's 1. It's, it's 1 it's because one. it's all the values from 4 and down. So it is equals to 4. That is correct. The probability that x is, is greater than or equals to 4 is 0 0.3. Is that correct? Yes. It is correct because it says it's any value from 4 and up. And we know that the table ends at 4. So therefore, it's the same as the probability of x is equals to 4. That's the only value that we have, which is 0 0.3, which is correct. And we know that this is another statement that they would like to use to confuse you very much. You can even ignore all the none of the above most of the time when you have your answer, your correct answer. But it says none of the above are incorrect, but we know that number two is incorrect. So that statement is correct. Okay, so we came to the end of what I wanted to talk to you about and discuss in terms of the discrete probability, but it doesn't mean we came to the end of the session. We ending at half past. We've discussed the probability distribution of a discrete variable. We looked at how to calculate the mean, the variance, the standard deviation, and how to do the probability of a discrete variable. Do you have any question before we go into the exercises in the next 30 minutes? Anything that you're still unsure of and you still want me to clarify? Nothing? Nada? Next. Okay. Cool. So we won't have any problem when we do some exercises. There is your exercise number one. I'm going to give you some minutes. When you are done, remember you can use the chat to post your answer and then we'll do the reflection. Remember the expected value is calculated by the sum of your outcome multiplied by its corresponding probability. So it means you can just take x times px and calculate all the values. Are you winning? Still trying. Yes. Yes, number four. Um, one point three eight. Okay, we'll get to that. Uh, somebody gets zero point seven eight. We'll get to that. Okay, so it's um, as if there are cap are there people who still are calculating? 
Okay. Yes. All right. We'll give you some time. Why are the others are still busy? Um, do you know why I can't see the uh, the chat option on my team? Uh, the same problem. Pro probably you are not part of the, you. Did you join us? So I did accept the invitation. Okay. I shouldn't be a so, guest. Yeah, probably because you you might not be part of the group, but I enabled the chat for this meeting. I don't know why you would be able to see the chat. Check now. Are you still unable to see the chat function? Yeah, I'll drop off the call and join again. It will be different. Okay. Are we are we done? Okay, silence means you are all done. Okay. Yes. Now let's get the answer. Zero point zero times zero point six is zero, right? One times mm. zero point two zero. And two times zero point one. So point two. 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 3 times 0 0.5, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.05 and 6 times 0 0.01 will be 0 0.06. So add them all together. 0 .8. So when we add all of them together, we get 0. Point Seven, seven, eight. seven, eight, which is option three. Hmm. Next. Suppose X represent oh, the number. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry. Um, why did I get 1.38? Maybe you must check your answers because now all the, the values you, are here. You probably added the Point six on the on the zero point seven eight. Okay, let me check. That's what no, I think. Check, it check was supposed your numbers, to be zero the answers one. you got on each one okay. of them. They okay, the answers they. Uh, please oh, make sure yeah, that I they. See. No, no. Sorry, please switch off the radios when you join the sessions. When there are music playing on YouTube, when we place the videos. It will tell us because it's copyrighted music sometimes. It might ask us to cut off the section. So we might delete the chunk of of the sessions as well. So make sure when you when you talk, there is no music playing in the background or people playing in the background. And if there are music, please put post on the chat because we don't want to take out any anything from the video so that we can learn from these things. Okay, so sorry, your question? Oh, no question. Sorry for cutting you, but I, it was just because of that music but that was playing in the background. Um, suppose X represent the number of students in STA 1610. The probability distribution is as follows. And this is the probability distribution. If the mean, so it means they've calculated the mean, you don't have to go and calculate the mean. If the mean is 2.52, then the variance of the best students in STA 1610 is, so it means calculate the variance. And we know that the variance is equals to the sum of your outcome minus the expected value squared multiplied by its corresponding probability. 
that's what we know. So you can come here and say X minus the expected squared times PX and then do your answers here. So the first one I can start it off so that if you are calculating and you're not getting the same answer, you know that you are doing some calculation wrong there. So. Can I give you time to do the question? I will write my answers in silence. And I will stop right there so that you can give me. I don't have to give you all the answers. Are we winning? Yes, we're getting there.
Are we winning? Are we done? done? Yes, the answer is 2.00211. Mm -hmm. I get 1.6496. Okay, uh, let's, let's see how we work it out. So one minus 2.52 squared, uh, equal squared, multiplied by 0 0.25, do you get 0 0.5776? Yes. Okay, and I'm yes. like, the second one, do we get 0 0.89232? Two minus five. Is that correct? Okay. And number three, is that correct? Yes. And number yeah. four? Yes. Zero point eight two eight five six. And number five, is that correct? Yes. Correct. If we add all of them, so you add 0 0.576776. I'm not going to write all the values here, saving time, because they are here. So you just add them all up, add them, add them, add them. When you add all of them, what do you get? 1.6496. 1 1.6496, which is option number? One. So please check your calculations when you're doing the calculations to make sure that you are calculating correctly as well. It's very important that you double check your calculations. And the answer is number two. So let's move on to the next one. The probability distribution of a discrete random variable follows the following. X represents the number of cars owned by a family. X are those probabilities are given. Which probability is incorrect? So let's, we're going to do this together. I think the couple of questions, we're going to do them together. I'm not going to give you time. And then there are about eight questions so we are on question number three so it means the others you can do on your own as practice after this session which probability is incorrect the probability that x is greater than one is equals to 0 0.35 true yes greater, correct greater than one therefore it means we must add all those probabilities that is correct so it's the addition of those two probabilities that is correct the probability that x is less than two or equals to two it means all of them right it's so true. here we calculating all of them we adding all these probabilities yeah that's correct it's correct that would be correct. Okay, moving on to the next one. The probability that it is between one and two includes because it's got greater than or equal or less than uh, greater than or equal or less than or equal. So it is including it's inclusive. That's true. Correct. And they say it's zero point, and that is correct. Mm -hmm. Number four, the probability that X is less than one, it does not include one, because they true. say it's less than, so it means it's this probability it's here. True. That is true. The probability that it is between zero and one, but exclusive of zero and inclusive of one, so X is greater than zero. So it means it's any value greater than zero, but it is less than one or equals to one. So it's any value less than or equals to one, which is the same as. Mm -hmm. 
which is zero comma four zero, and that's how you answer the questions. Easy, right? It will be easy, ne? When we get assignment questions. Yes. Now let's look at it when they give us word problems. So yeah, the word problem. The following discrete probability shows the number of workers from uh, Sasol per day, which follows a discrete probability distribution. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Yeah. Is our probabilities and our outcomes. Statement number one, the probability that between one and five learners are absent on a given day is 0 0.95. Assume one and five are both inclusive. So what are they asking? They are inclusive. So our X inclusive will mean greater than or less than or equal, right? It will include the equality side and they say one and five always start with the smaller value and then go to the bigger value as well so what do they mean they say any value between that and that it's in one and five, oh, and we're looking for the incorrect statement right mm -hmm. So that will be 0 0.99 because it's adding all of them. Otherwise, you could always say also it's the same as it is the same as the probability that one minus because there are so many to add. You can say it's one minus the probability that X is equals to one. It will be the same as the between the statement because it will be. 1 minus 0 0.1, which will give us 0 0.9. You can also do it that way. Instead of adding so many numbers, you can take the complement of that. The probability that at least, what is at least? Well, sorry, ma'am, would it be equal to, to 0? 1 minus probability equal to 0? Oh, sorry. I took it's equals to zero yes i took the number from that but i wrote one day instead of zero sorry my bad um thank you for that uh at least what does at least mean greater than or equal greater than or equal so yeah we're looking for the probability that x is greater than or equals to they say at least one so greater than or equals to one I, I think this question has a problem. But anyway, we're looking for the incorrect statement, then both of them can be correct. I think there is a mistake on the question. It might be looking for the correct correct question, so not the incorrect. We'll circle back to that. Because this one says at least one. So it's still the same because it's all of them. Adding all of them from one and above, which is equals to 0 0.9 as well. The probability that at most one. At most one. What does at most mean? Less than or equal. Less than. So the probability that X is less than or equals to one. It's equals to 0 0.3, right? Because it's those two values. Zero, it's probability of zero and plus the probability of one. The probability that one learner is absent. The probability that one learner is absent. 
What do they mean? Equal to one. Equals to one. And that probability is equals to? No, point two. Not point two because it is just this probability here. Which means there is a typing error on this question and I think I got it from last year's uh, tutorial letter on questions, which means the answer is option four. Should have said which one of this statement is correct. The probability that between one and five are absent on a given day, assuming that one and five are both not inclusive. So it means exclusive. So yeah, they're asking you to find the probability that X lies between one and five because they are both not inclusive, which means they are exclusive. So it means we're only looking at those ones. So that probability is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.15, which is equals to 0.65. Which so I, think it, I, think, I think it wasn't a typing error, ma'am. I think the first two were meant to be um, 0 0.90 instead of 0 0.95. Huh? Or they no. the five, maybe it was supposed to be yeah, I think so. I think because one of them. The only incorrect answer is is would then be three. Wait, sorry. One and two, I think, were meant to be uh, point nine zero. Yeah. They put the five in error. The five in error, right? So let's. let's yeah. So the like five that. is the error. So number three yeah, is the one that five. would be incorrect. Because this one is correct, this one is correct. Incorrect, yeah. Uh, and this one is also correct, and this one, yeah. So let's assume that, yeah, I'm gonna wrap out the five and wrap out the five, yeah. So, and then that means only option three would be the incorrect one. Okay, I understand now. Thank you for picking that one up. So we were on question number four. So I'm going to leave you with exercise number five. You can do them. I've posted this on my UNISA, so you have access to the notes with all these additional questions. So question number five is, there is the question. So you need to calculate the probability of at least at most the expected value, the variance, and the between. You can see that the between it's inclusive and exclusive. And question number six, there is a missing value there. They say it's probability three. You need to calculate it and see if it's 0 0.15 and the between and at least at most. I told you that they like at least and at most. So you need to know those things by heart by now. Um, and the probability that all students, you should be able to find that. And number seven, also the same, a speech therapist will consult four children. So this will be equal because they say with, with which is the same as exactly, uh, with most, so which is at most, between inclusive exclusive you can see there there are your hints the probability that the speech therapist will consult at least so probably here they left at at most at most so when you study at unisa you will realize that most of some of these past exam papers and tutorial letters they've got so many errors, a little, little errors that make you scratch your head, but most of the time they they will give you the points if it's their error, if they found the errors as well, or if students are complaining about the errors. So when you pick up an error in the assignment, send an email to your lecturer. It's very important. The more people send the questions, the more it will be resolved. 
and let me know as well when you send those messages so I can follow up as well. All right, and the last questions, uh, I think I said eight, right? So the other question is just asking you to calculate the expected, the expected value, and the last one will ask you to calculate the variance. Um, and that concludes today's session. We are right on the dot, not on the dot, two minutes. Right. And are there any questions? If there are no questions, thank you for being here today. I really appreciate your participation. Out of 500 students, all of you are very special. I appreciate you for sacrificing your Sunday with me. Thank you. Thank you. We thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.